is uh, digital can be an issue when you are asking technician who are not so good to do it. Uh, and I had feedback from people I will not name that in fact incognito sometimes the technician were, I mean, they were not the same level as the uh, German technician of uh, Wickman. So he knows them very well. And uh, it's true that the first work they sent me back, it was obviously by someone who, has, who had no notion of, uh, I, I mean, I don't even think there were real control technicians. Like the first setup, uh, it's, it was an extraction case. They moved me the teeth out of the bone. Oh. oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's what I, it's, I mean, I don't even understand how uh, a technician was a training uh, as a dental technician could have done this. You know, at one point, they should have said, it makes no sense. The, the dentist do not want to move the lower incisor uh, outside the alveolar, alveolar bone. So, you know, we contact him, say, sorry, perhaps there is a misunderstanding about what you want. No, they just, they just did it. And so, uh, the quality control uh, is perhaps not so good. Uh, I, I don't think that a digital setup is an issue when it's done by someone who knows what he's doing. I, the, the, the thing that gets me um, a lot of the time is that um, it, it depends on the experience of the, uh, as we said about the person behind the screen, behind the, behind the keyboard, behind the mouse, or even a manual setup, the level of experience of the technician in the lab. And unless they've done setups, which many technicians don't do, most orthodontic technicians deal with removable appliances. They deal with yeah. twin blocks and, and, and bionators and stuff like that, you know, and Hawleys and, 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 and Hyrax expanders. So they're not used to doing a setup. And when I saw it being done in Korea, for example, at the WSL02, which was in a, a, a pre-Congress course done by the, the Korean group there, uh, which I went on, um, troubleshooting in lingual orthodontics, they were they had the teeth on the bench and they were just putting the teeth onto a template and yeah, i thought well is. how do you know where how much you've changed you know okay the 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 the, the, you know what, Peter, the, even worse the this. I, told him I, I visited the lab in korea where they were doing this and i was okay they were following the template of the arch form mm. you know like they have the what teeth <laughs> the teeth separated and they have a, a template of the natural arch form or the one they are using. They put the template and they dispose the teeth following this template. And I was, okay, but if you want to do this, you know, you just bond your bracket normally and you insert your wire and you will have exactly the same thing. Mm. Mm. I mean, it was, it was making, I don't even understand how you can have a lab and do something like this because you ask an orthodontist, he will tell you, but just bond the bracket normally and insert your wire and you will have an arch form uh, following your wire. The point of doing a setup, uh, uh, a fully customized appliance is to keep the arch form of the patient. Yes. It's, it's one, of, one of the big advantage. And that is typical of the fact that a lot of lab laboratory, I don't know who put in place, who invented the process, but not someone who knew so much about what they were doing, okay? Because that's the kind of thing that I would expect a dentist who don't know about arch form, about, you know, because I don't really study this, uh, will do. Mm. And go back to Whitman, you also have to know that you have different school uh, of work, uh, and Whitman was one of the things that drive him with incognito, uh, he, he was looking for precision. Yes. Okay, so they had a super nice process for the precision of the slot, precision of the wire, and they made a publication showing they were filling the slot uh, almost completely. And with Win, he went one step further with high speed miling and I don't know what. And I suppose a lot of work on the wire because the wing clink when you want to go for precision, it's not the slot of the, it's not the slot really, it's, it's the wire. It's very hard to manufacture a wire with precise dimension. Okay, because of the of the usual process of doing it. Okay, and in senior, I think they use laser mining or something. No, they are yes. not using the usual process for doing a wire. Yes. But this being said, the fact that you have something 
as precise also have a lot of disadvantages. Like if you want to reposition your bracket, okay, if you make, uh, when you reposition your bracket, because with win you have a, a resin base so you can, if you, you know, you make a, a three degree variation of torque, which is quite easy to do when you do a direct bonding, well, your wire will make you a three degree of torque of, uh, of root movement and you can have an issue uh, with the sense, because me, I stopped working with them with my second case because I was frapped, I mean, I was shocked by the, the violence of the, of the movement. The movement, you know, you put your wire, you, you have movement right away, you see you have, you have no degree of play, and I was saying this is kind of dangerous. And uh, me, I don't care so much about the precision. You know, I work with an size wire. Uh, and the precision I will do with a liner. Yeah. And the thing is, if you don't go for a lot of precision, okay, in fact, the time in the lab and your cost go down considerably. You understand, like, if you want to make, with your technique, if you want to make something super precise, you will do a manual setup. Yeah. Very probably. Uh, you will do, uh, you will have to spend a lot of time measuring to be sure you use exactly the same point. I mean, it will be, it will be more time consuming. Same for every step. Okay. Uh, the question, I mean, not the question, but in fact, if you read the literature, it's a trend that it's constant in orthodontic. Precision does not translate by uh, clinical advantage, advantage that much. Mm. So if you go for a lot of precision, like win is super precise. You cannot make more precise than win. The treatment, unless I miss a publication, are not shorter. Mm. Incognito, it was also a lot more precise. In fact, at the time, Incognito was the first fully customized appliance with a degree of precision was way superior to what you can have with a vestibular uh, appliance uh, bonded manually. Incognito does not translate by shorter time of uh, treatment. Mm. Mm. Thank okay. you. But, yeah. Yeah, we're, we're, we're going to move on, Nick. <laughs> I'm, I'm nearly finished, but just want to get on with these. Thanks for the um, contribution. That's good to hear it. You know, people's experiences is what other doctors need to hear as well. And that's the good thing when we're face to face in a in a room. And, you know, there's 30 of us in a room and we're talking and people can put the hand up. And we had, as you probably remember, some quite heated discussions in uh, in Bangkok with Henrique, but it, it all came out very well at the end. Everybody had a good time and they learned a lot and uh, we had a good laugh as well. So um, eye braces, as I'm saying, just to give the people a hear and some of the people who are just maybe starting lingual or thinking, you know, there's a lot of different systems, you know, it's just to let them know what's, what's, what's out there. And, you know, you have many different types of uh, eye braces now, if you like, and um, um, to get a self-ligating bracket on a on a CAD CAM system, they have to make them by metal injection molding uh, the body and then laser welding them to a, a prefabricated base in the CAD CAM system. So the CAD CAM system makes the base, and then the 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 the, the slot, the body of the bracket is welded to them. You can see some harmony brackets in the mouth with what's called the optimized wire. This is the optimized wire. This, if people don't know it, it's got an extra bend basically for the canine. That's all. Hello? Hello? What do I say? So you you have some very big brackets here, and they they look quite bulky to be honest, you know, and and, and protruding into the old cavity quite a way. Um, but this is the what they call the optimized wire, which has an extra bend basically for the canines, which you'll find if you do lab bonding yourself. In about seventy five percent of upper cases, you might have to make that extra bend, otherwise you're compensating too much the incisors with too much resin, and then you end up with the compromise that I talked about before of, of, uh, of um, the, the biomechanical compromise. So you have other systems, CAD-CAM systems, include Sure Smile, Lingual Liberty, 
embraces. Um, they, 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 they vary in the way that they approach it. And then some systems like Limbo, Lingual Liberty and Sure Smile take standard brackets that are manufactured. They have files and that you can position them with their software. Although I've been told by a, a, a doctor who used Sure Smile for a long time, the actual positioning of the bracket really is 2D. You, even though you're doing it through a 3D program, it's still only 2D positioning of the bracket. It's the wire that makes it 3D. Uh, on open software systems like that, you tend to get just 2D bonding in lingual. It's very difficult to control the position and the compensation of the pad um, through the software. So this is the, the problem that a lot of them have been having. Um, somebody's drawn on the screen. It's not me, but somebody's drawn on the screen at some point during this um, presentation. It's still there. I don't know why. Um, must, that must have been done somewhere in China, I presume. Um, two main philosophies are you use customized wires which move the teeth to the correct position when the brackets are close to the teeth as possible. Therefore, lots of first order bends similar to your 2D technique or incognito, where the wires are bent by robots, etc., and sure smile, or you use straight wires or these um, optimized wire and pre um, mushroom wires, and, and then position the brackets with offsets and various thicknesses. So it's the varying thicknesses that, that, that allows you to have a straighter wire. So it's a compromise. You find a compromise between the type of wire that you want compared to the, the, the biomechanical advantages, how close your brackets are to the teeth and, uh, uh, and, and the comfort for the patient, obviously, if the brackets are closer to the teeth. Uh, here we have a picture of a robot bending the wires. Um, but there's no, I, I, you know, if you're willing to put the work in, you should be able to bend the wires yourself if you, if you do some reasonable positioning. There are problems. There can be problems with any system. And this, is, this was a CAD-CAM system that had, had a problem, uh, a case that I was asked to look at. A uh, doctor had started and lost control of the case, extraction case, and it was well basically due to the design of the of the bracket you can see on the canine on the 23 and very strange lever arm almost <laughs> and this was just to, so that the people who had done the system could do a straight wire uh, other cats cam systems that you you don't think about instinctively but um, when you're working on a, on a, on a cat cam system or on, even on a setup model you don't have the gingiva there. So that's why I like bonding to the master model because then I can look at the relationship of the bracket to the gingiva and the brackets to each other on the malocclusion model, which brackets we can bond in the first phase or, or which we can't and have to bond in second phase. Uh, here you can see the brackets are going into the gingiva, deep into the gingiva here, um, uh, cause a problem with, for, for the patients. So even though well, it might seem easy on a computer, I just have to make this comment, it might just be too easy. So don't rely that a computer is the golden goose and it's going to, uh, that laid the golden egg and it's going to cure everything for you because it's 3D. Um, and just like this joke of, you know, well, I could fix your arm in Photoshop, but it's still broken. Um, so over the years, we had lots of other things. We had jigs and instruments. Sylvia Garon from Israel did a jig called the lingual bracket jig with positioned brackets. You could put them directly in the mouth, but um, uh, it's, it's, you have the mini targ, 1987. You have Dr. Fillion with these added. This was very important when he added this dimension to the targ. He had the thickness, which the TARG never had. So that was, a, a, he created the best system, bonding with equal specific thickness. That was to reduce the, the bends in the wire and make a more predictable wire form. And he also created a, a, a wire um, a program called the DALI, 
des Saint-Arc-Languel and from Métisé. So that was the, the uh, uh, quite a big step in lingual, quite an important step. Um, Dr. Dirk Weitman, he created an instrument 10 years later, which took care of the height here, because of the height problem I mentioned before. So, Nintendo, what it's a, a blend, it's a hybrid technique. So I used the TAD and BPD, and we've got class technique. So it's like doing a setup model. We have the TARG theory, so we bond. So we can bond on the master model using the values. Um, we have the best technique as well. And my phone's going bing, bing, bing. Sorry about that. I'll try and turn, turn it off. A lot of messages here. Come on, guys. Hey, come on, guys. Sorry, I'm coming back. I'm just switching my phones off. There's too much binging going off in the background. There we go. Right, my phone's off, so if you're messaging me, tough, tough. This was about how we blast, microblast the brackets. We put them in some modeling clay, and microblast them with 110 micron, just very shortly, just for a couple of seconds, and it uh, etches the surface takes away the shine. So if you can see a comparison between the brackets on the left and the brackets on the right, these are from the factory, you know, as they come out, non-microblasted, this is microblasted. It, it made quite a difference to the, to, the, to the bonding, actually, increased the bonding strength quite a lot. So we, we used that as a process. As I said, it was developed in 2005 for a specific reason. Um, there we, we developed some jaws for the bracket so we could take vertical for the instrument so we could take vertical slots and that uh, was I was asked to do that in 2007 by Dr. Ian Hutchinson so I, I made a vertical um, slot holder there we can see some pictures of the brackets bonded it's very important when we're bonding the brackets that we get the accuracy and we can compare and we can look at the positions on the master models as i said in relation to the gingiver whether we need to bend hooks uh, we can check the occlusion of the master models and we try and keep the brackets out of occlusion as much as possible but we are limited with that on the lingual obviously uh, especially in deep bite cases but uh, we can do everything we can to try and manage the wire plane to get the best position of the brackets for, for the for the comfort of the patient, the occlusion, the 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 biomechanics and the wire form, so we can simplify the wire form. So by compensating the the resin uh, and between the brackets. And uh, when we're using the instruments, it's very uh, easy that we can use small brackets like this but we can still position them well which is quite difficult by eye doing 2d with very small brackets it's very hard to see the slot but the instrument holds the slot in position compared to the, uh, the long axis of the clinical crown centering the brackets on the tooth very important keep them central and keeping them parallel with the vestibular surface that's important if you want predictability during your ca uh, case as it progresses. So creating tip backs, sometimes we need to do this for, for as a working prescription, not a final prescription, as a working prescription to, to negate uh, side effects of, of on extraction cases, for example. But here you can see uh, the positions of the brackets compared to the tip back. And this was minus six, but the tooth was already tipped back. So the bracket looks parallel with the occlusal surface. Here, the tooth was in a good position. So the tip back, the bracket looks, the slot 
is tilting towards the mesium, tilting down towards the mesium. That means it's got negative tip on it. It's going to tip the bracket back. It's going to push the root forwards before we start. And then that will help join the extraction closing of the extraction space. So why should we do setup models? Why should we measure setup models? Uh, setup in order to, like I showed you before, for, to the exact existing antagonist model, if only treating one arch. Uh, survey tip and torque values present in the setup. Compare with the original master. We can determine how much we move the teeth to avoid errors. Um, in the transfer of the brackets, we can bond directly on the master model to avoid transfer errors so that we can use the values from a setup model and use them as a prescription to bond directly onto the master model. And then we can keep wire bending to, to a minimum. These are some charts that we used. We've gone over time, I think, prescription because we've had some discussions here. So this was the prescription, the original best prescription from Dr. Filion we were using. So it was like a standard chart for lingual, almost like the MBT. And I started thinking about this, you know, why does MBT have different values for, like the canine, for example, on different arch forms. Your canine has different values. So, you know, maybe the arch form should determine also the tip and the torque. And in my studies of measuring thousands of models, I came to the conclusion that it does. Unfortunately, there's no official studies been done on this that I know of. And I've actually suggested to a couple of universities that they should look at this and maybe come out with some new ideas unless you're going to do indirect bonding for every case, in which case you can individualize all the values that you want. So there's a normal torque. This was a high torque. And then you have a low torque. So just three different talks, an extraction case with tip backs. And this is our, our survey chart. So you can see the values here maybe look nothing like what you expect them to look. And then we can survey the setup model. And we can compare the values between setup model and master model. And then we can come out with a bonding chart based on compensations for movement and what we want to do. So if I want to procline the teeth and the teeth are at say minus five, or let's say the teeth are at zero and I wanted a finished, a finished uh, a torque of 10 degrees, um, if I'm gonna finish with like 1725 Y where there's five degrees of play, then I should use a 15 degree prescription to get to my 10 degrees. Otherwise it will never get there it'll stop at five degrees because of the five degrees play. So these are the things we need to think about. They're the examples of the bonding charts and uh, why we do a, a setup as well. It helps us make a wire template, individualize arch forms. We can bend when the case is simple, just simple anterior alignment like this one. You can maybe do it without a setup. Posteriors weren't being moved. So we can do our wire template over the model, estimating. So in the words of Dr. Craig Andreco from OMCO, he, he thought it was ironic that orthodontics have tried to force a single arch form and size on all patients treated with night eye wires. This flies in the face of logic, he said. After all, who would buy shoes at a store that only carried one size of, or, and width of shoe? But, say maybe three sizes of shoes, because maybe there's three arch forms. But um, yeah, we we're talking about the occlusal plane earlier, and it doesn't matter what the occlusal plane, this was the only case I've ever been sent on a fully anatomical articulator um, from London, and um, it was on the base already. So we had surveyed. So I made a duplicate of that model and then put here, flat to a flat plane and it's the same model as you can see the tip the inclination of the um of the lower anterior is 21.8 degrees well we know that you're not going to have 21.8 degrees of inclination on 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 your bracket prescription and when i 
measured it on a flat plane, it was actually 6.7 degrees. But everything else would change in relation to that. So we could take a wire plane which goes through there like that, and then we bring it to this and move the model around, it's the same wire plane. Just all the values that we would use for bonding would change. Transfer trays we have. So we've got our member cell trays that we like to do, but we include a hard interior key so that these can be sectioned at a later date if you need them for rebonding. Um, and or when we can section the tray into three parts, which most doctors like, they like to bond the posterior left and right and the anteriors. And we do the same trays for labial or lingual, doesn't matter. Summarize. There's many different te lab techniques. There are many different brackets, but the main importance is how the slot is placed. Some brackets suit certain cases better than other brackets. So the choice of the brackets help reduce lab and clinical problems. Some cases lend themselves well to symbol techniques and some need 3D control. And if we're doing 3D control, IDB is a must. Well, I think it's a must in all lingual. Um, and a good, if you're not doing a setup, a good understanding of biomechanics is needed for total individualization of a case. And they all vary in labor time and cost. It's just the instruments. That was my last instrument. Not the new one. This was the last electronic one I made. TTS, this is the new one. It's manual. I've gone back to protractors and one degree. It's cheaper to make and actually less moving parts make it more reliable, more accurate. Um, so we've gone back to that. You can see the tip here is at the back and the torque is here. You can measure it off. Same function, it's the same function. You don't have to learn anything new. And the BPD, we've gone back to the BPD. So originally uh, I went from BPD to BPI. Now I've come back to a modified BPD. So we did a slight modification of where we position the jaws. So we have better visual than the old one. And that was the last BPI, the electronic one. My acknowledgements. Some photos of the old lab in Chiang Mai, when we used to be there and do all the courses, everything. A lot of people visit, it was a very really nice place to be. So I leave you with these thoughts. Dr. Prophet said in 2005, unfortunately the salespeople have become the new gurus of orthodontics. So should we go back to basics? Should we be evaluating all new systems? What makes them tick? Are there some basic rules we should not forget and demand detailed information about how the systems actually work and what they're made of? Uh, so I hope this will inspire you all to think about work. Thank you. And for those of you who are still here, if you've got any questions, I will attempt to answer them. Anybody? I leave that on there. You can go to those websites and have a look. Hi, Peter. Yes. It's, um, it's Nick. How are you doing? Hi, Nico. How are you? I'm um, fine. Thanks for, thanks for a brilliant lecture um, and thanks for inviting me on. I really appreciate it. Um, just, I've got a couple of questions. First thing yeah. is the um, inter-bracket width. You said that it's reduced in lingual and it causes this flexible wire to be a lot stiffer. Just in terms of the significance of that, does that mean that it puts a higher force in the teeth? Is that what the main significance of that? Yeah, I've got I've got some interference. There's some I don't know if somebody else is trying to talk in the background or what. So just go one at a time. I've got Dr. Nickel with me at the moment and he's asking about the flexibility of the wire. And oh, yeah. you and you said that um because of that and I missed the last bit. Um because of that because of the stiffness of the wire, does that place more force onto the teeth? Ex and that's exactly exactly. This is why we want light forces. You know that in orthodontics now, all orthodontics is moving towards light forces compared to the heavy forces that they used to have. Um, 
and especially in lingual. So because of that interbracket interbracket inter distance is much smaller, it makes the wires stiffer. So we should be using smaller wires in lingual than we are in label. Sure. And um, my second question, if you don't mind answering it, was just regarding rabbiting. Um, you showed a case where you had some extrusion of the anterior teeth. Yes. Yes. And just to kind of, I just wanted to clarify the sort of theory behind that. You talked about high torque brackets or increase in prescription of these brackets. Yes. Am, am I correct in saying that more torque that those brackets have, the more gingival you're placing, and as a result of that, the base thickness is increased, and therefore, because you're placing it more gingival, you're extruding the teeth. Is that what oh, has yeah. working? Yes. No. What happens is if you do a compensation, so you say I want to place this bracket at high torque because it's an extraction case or you need some compensating torque um, for, for retraction of any, any sort, right? So you don't want the teeth to retrocline when you pull the teeth back. If you've yep. got no compensating torque, that this is why you use a high torque prescription usually in extraction cases. Then in lingual, when you do that and you bond it, you, you end up with a bracket. If you use an instrument, you end up with it further down the tooth lingual surface, unless you decide an arbitrary height first and mark that on the model and say, I'm not bothered what torque I'm going to put on. This is the height I want. Now, yeah. that's, that's, that's similar to what Dr. Enrique does with his slot machine. And he's modified all of his techniques over the years. I mean, 20 years of getting fantastic results and does all of his lab work himself. So, it, it, you know, it's a statement in itself. Um, but in, in the setup model, if you're using like a setup model technique, they put the compensation like Dr. Skuzo Takamoto, a hero, et cetera, um, he Myung Kyung, in the model. So they compensate the setup model. And when they do that, it means that the brackets are positioned more gingival. So when they're using smaller wires, yeah. the first wires for leveling, especially round wires, it means that they're going to extrude those teeth. What's your preference then? I don't know if you said that, but is your preference not to do that? Well, my, my preference is if you're going to bond on a, on a setup model, don't use plates, don't use a wire use my BPD instrument where you can bond individually because then I can compensate the central incisors by yeah. bonding those brackets half a millimeter more incisor or millimeter more incisor, yeah. which will yeah. compensate that. But if you're going to get your full expression of torque, you might have to accept as a lot of doctors would in the past, they'd say, well, this is just one of the things in lingual. Some doctors would say, Oh, um, when, when we were first doing our technique, you know, with the Nintendo back in 2010, some doctors would say to me, I've got the usual rabbit in, but I know it's going to go when I put the, the full size wires in. Because they, then they get the full expression of torque. But the yeah. question with that is, do you need that? Will it, will it be harder to get them back into that position? Mm. You know? Okay. Yeah. Um, Thank you. And most doctors tell me that they only finish on the 1725 TMA. Uh, max, you know, so that means that they're always going to have about five to six degrees of play. Do they find that they get an increase overbite, it's like the overbite slightly increased by the end of that then because they haven't been able to correct the torque completely. Yeah, yeah, and and, and so, you know, I mean, if the, if, the, if you can't get that, to, I mean, it's very easy to see when you when you use a model like the one I, sh I showed that I use on the courses, and then I bonded and I took the wax away and you just rotate the teeth around the wire and you see immediately the, 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 the difference in vertical height, you know. It's, but obviously that, that's on the modeling demonstration model. You're not going to get that clinically. There's other complications clinically to do with how much the root's moving in the bone, how much it can move, etc. I mean, because you have all sorts of other forces, you know, I, I understand that in the mouth you know, rather than just the wire and the, and the slot. Brilliant. Awesome. Thanks so much. And thanks for a great lecture. You're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, hi, sir. Can I uh, have a question? Yep. Uh, I want to know the thickness uh, of the transfer trays uh, that you use. The, the, the what? 
the, the thickness, how thick are your transfer trays? Oh, the transfer trays, how thick are they? Um, yeah. well, I've got one here, let's just have a look. It depends on how, how, how thick you want them. I'll just, I'm just going to measure this one because that's a good, a good question because we do it by hand. So I'm just measuring this one and it's... And how soft they are? Oh, well the Memosil is about 72 sure hardness, but um, so it's flexible enough to come off without bothering the brackets. We're looking at probably a five, six mil thickness, you know, of the tray. But I, I put this um, hard key inside with, with a product called uh, LC Blockout. Um, when I first learned to do them, they put a small key, but not a big occlusal key. So they put a, a like a hard key that just went over the size of legend down the, down the vestibular. Now, that was basically to stick the numbers on. Um, I decided to increase the surface to cover most, most of the occlusal surface with the hard key so that it acts as a stop. You can see this one here, I don't know if you can see that Yeah, and uh, is there any difference between the transfer trace that you use for lingual technique and legal technique? No, I don't, because I think these are the best trays, and nearly all of my clients have used these type of trays, have agreed, and they've used every system that's, that's out there. Um, you know, I mean, the original system of Memosil Key, I learned, to, learned in Dr. Filion's lab, but I, I think it's much better than the thermoforming. I think the thermoform trays don't hold the brackets in position very well, and, and okay, they might be quick and cheap to do, uh, less time consuming, but, but they're not as precise. And the fact that when the thermoform shrinks, it could move the bracket position, you know? You have some thinking. Yeah, yeah. whereas the memosil, if you do the hard key, see, people used to say, well, the memosil is so flexible. It's not that flexible, but I conquered that by putting a hard key inside. So it means if I press this down, it doesn't move because the memosil that has got this part, then if I need to separate this in the future, I can, it will lock individually on each tooth very well. And uh, is there any new uh, need to remove uh, the bonding material from the brackets uh, or not? Or, uh, you send the transfer trays uh, to the doctor with the bonding materials on them. But when, when the trays are delivered, they, they've already got the brackets inside with, with, with the composite that's done for the 3D positioning. So the programming is in the, three, in the composite and the composite's been trimmed and it, it's microblasted as well, very, very slightly with 50 micron, very quickly at very low pressure, 1.5. Um, bar um, just to just to etch it and clean it, and they've been steam cleaned and, and clean with acetone. So that they're, they're, they're all good to bond in the mouth, and, and a very small micro micro uh, micron space between the, the pad and the tooth. And then, uh, is there any new uh, to use uh, uh, flu material to bond them to the teeth or uh, oh. regular? Yes, um, well, um, most people in the past would use, would use a normal composite, and, but you only need a very small amount. Now 3M are making a, ve a more viscous indirect bonding material because they realized that the, the trans bond was too thick. And it's great for the lab, but not so good in the clinic. So you, you can use whatever composite you like with them. I mean, the, the composites bond to composite. Um, no, no, I mean, I mean the low viscosity composite is needed. Sorry? Low viscosity composites. You mean the flow composite? Yeah. Yeah, yes. yeah. I mean, if you're happy with the flow composite, you can use the flow composite. I mean, now that the um, 3M do specifically a, a more flowable indirect bonding um, composite, especially for incognito and stuff, because obviously they realize that you need a very thin amount. You can bond these brackets this with A and B. Uh, uh, you know, you can use a, um, a chemical bond like Sondi. 
and Sondi is excellent for this. Because the bracket pad has been made to fit the tooth, you can use A and B and the two don't activate until you get the A and the B together. So that's what Dr. Enrique does in Brazil, he uses Sondi. Can you let me know what is A and B? It's the two it's chemicals. Bond? You put one on the bracket and one on the it's only, tooth. Yeah, it's only bonding material, not the composite. Yes, yes. Chemical, yeah. yeah, chemical bond. Chemical bond. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much for You're your great uh, presentation. Thank you. Thank you so much. Any other questions? I'm turning into a hologram quickly. I don't know what's happening with my lights. Good. That's it. We will. I will stop sharing my screen. Come back to everybody. Hi there. Alfredo, I can see you there. I couldn't see everybody before. I could only see my PowerPoint. Um, as I said, this is a very, very um, uh, basic PowerPoint that I tried to cover as many sort of important points that I thought uh, towards the, the, the lingual lab technique. Um, but um, as, as, as you probably realize with Dr. Nicholas's uh, uh, contribution here, and I don't know if Christian's still here, he could probably let you know the same, that there's a, is a lot more to it than that. Um, and, and it, it, you know, I, I went two times for two weeks to Paris. And, and to be honest, I probably came back with 5% of the knowledge that I have now, and that's four weeks. You know, and that was mainly mainly practicing bonding and learning the basics. So you 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 have to apply knowledge, and you have to learn, and you have to try different things. But there's a, a basic basic recipe now because we've been through all the trial and error. So I've made a basic recipe that people can learn in a few days, and then they can build on top of that because the instruments are so flexible for use. You know, you can do so many things with them. Like I explained, you can either bond on a setup model or you can bond on a master model or you can bond, make your own prescriptions, uh, individualized prescriptions. Then then it's just the limit of your orthodontic knowledge that's going to that, that's control how you work. Hi, right, Jamie. We're going to leave it now, then. I don't seem to have any more questions. It seems that, it seems that uh, Dr. Dr. Gilbert has have question about with these self-locating brackets, the torque will be applied with the same force. Yeah, I, 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 I didn't have my chat there. Okay, there's a lot in the chat. I've just seen it in the chat. Sorry. Yeah, you can see it in the chat. Can, can, yeah, I can go to the chat and then and then... Or people can send me the questions via Facebook to my messenger. I think some of them know my messenger. Some of them have my WhatsApp. I'm looking down the chat now. Do, 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 do. Can you mute the microphone, please? Yeah, that was... Uh, Mohammed. to me privately, it's easier. Okay, anyone? I don't know. I'm not a doctor. I said that in the beginning. Beginning. Um, how do I get the recorded video? I, I, how can you get the recorded video to them? Are you going to put it on Facebook, Jamie? Yes, we, we already recorded. And we, okay. we are well, Jamie, Jamie will Facebook. share that with me, and I will share it on Nintendo. 
on the Nintendo Facebook page. So everybody can go and see it there. Um, Thank you very much, Peter. Ceramic, ceramic bracket yeah. first appeared. Now there is a liner. What do I think about the future of lingual? I went through a period of thinking, well, linguals, you know, um, got an uphill struggle against aligners. But now I think if lingual, there is a space for lingual. I'm talking to more and more doctors around the world, and they're also thinking that economically there's a space for lingual if it's at the right price. If we can get the right price bracket, the right price lab uh, work, and obviously doing the work yourself, as, as long or teaching someone in your clinic to do it for you like an assistant or a technician um, which I've done for other doctors I've taught I teach technicians and assistants um, around the world that will bond for their own clerk for their own clinics and then it makes everything in-house and it allows them to put lingual at a, at a price bracket that's between labial and uh, and the liners so aligners is up there because you've got no choice. You're locked into the system, like Invisalign, and it's quite expensive. So even after after COVID, maybe there's going to be a brighter future for lingual, where people are looking for for a more economical uh, alternative. Uh, and and the orthodontists themselves, I have to say this, I've never understood why the orthodontists embrace so much the aligners so easily and then were used as guinea pigs for years doing the aligners for the aligner companies while they could collated a database which basically their computers work by database um, to, 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 to do it. I don't think they have any magical biomechanical um, 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 calculations in their computers that move the teeth. I think it's all by experience. And um, um, as Nicholas stated earlier, you get some some companies, you know, where you, you don't know that the, the people um, doing the aligners, how much experience they've got. So um, um, I think you're going to see an increase in in-house aligners, um, lab aligners through, through um, um, software systems that are open. I know some labs that are doing aligners and been doing them for years and got a lot of experience, like my friend Socrates in, in Greece, um, and, and, and uh, people may be moving away some, from some of the big systems because of the time and the expense. So people are gonna need something that's more affordable. So that was that question. Fixed orthodontics won't won't disappear. I agree. I don't think fixed orthodontics will disappear. Um, what else we've got? I have to go. Thanks for the webinar. <laughs> See you tomorrow. Feedback. Yes, you can talk to me. Message me anytime on my Nintendo. Message me personally if you know my Facebook. I'm always answering questions on there. I must say though here during this, you know, um, I, the odd person has, has sort of abused my time slightly where they'll be sending me questions all the time and, and, and it gets past the point of what's, what's, what's normal. You know, I do, I do, when I go around the world, I do charge people um, and per, per day and travel expenses, etc. when I go to set stuff up in there in their clinics so you know it's normally five hundred dollars a day for the for the courses so for my time plus plus whatever so i'm thinking of of collating the rest of the powerpoints which i have many more detailed especially of lab techniques step by step and putting them onto some sort of paid paid platform where people can pay a modest fee because the world looks like it's changing and we have to do things more online unfortunately um, but I do realize there's only a certain amount you can do online and the rest of it has to be hands-on actually face to face um, as Nicholas said he did two times five days in my lab in Thailand with his with, with the team so he brought a team with him and we have my team and we spent 
10 days in total. Dr. Christian from Chile spent 13 days the first time he came to me. Um, and he probably has one of the biggest lingual clinics in the world. Mm. So what else? Um, and, uh, can we please show a summary slide? Show the summary slide. You mean the last one? Mm -hmm. Hello? Who's that from? Ahmed. Which, which slide do you mean, a summary slide? Yes. Question from Dr. Gilbert. Yes. Dr. Alfredo, with, with this self-ligating brackets, the torque will be applied with the same force than with the friction brackets. Good question. Um, the slot is smaller. Um, I know that doesn't mean a lot. Um, it means you're using smaller wires, so it means that you're using lighter wires. I'm forcing you to use lighter wires. Um, Yes, the force should be applied with the same as any any bracket because torque for me is to do with the bracket dimension and the slot. So as long as you're filling the slot, friction is often created by the ligations and the clips on, 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 on self-ligating brackets. It's the active clip pushing on the wire and, and, and the differences between the teeth. I mean, I know there's been no really scientific studies if we want to go into the details of this and um, there's been no concrete evidence about friction um, in orthodontics um, and Nicholas would jump into this conversation straight away I'm sure um, but um, if obviously the malalignment of the teeth and the way the brackets twist through the teeth at different heights and different rotations etc creates friction anyway um, and your ligations will create friction you've only got to put brackets on a wire um, I know it's a very simple exercise but it's all things being perfect if you had a wire and the teeth were you know um, the slots were roughly at the same height etc and you just want to slide a bracket along a wire as a purely mechanical experience then you can see what, what, what difference is the friction between different brackets. I mean, you just get a wire and test it yourself. I don't see how that will affect torque as long as, because torque is the, is the moment. So if you've got, if you've got your, your, any space, you've got that compensation before mm -hmm. the torque is engaged with the two points connecting the slot. That's why I prefer a rectangular slot to a square slot um for torque control but um no uh, i don't know i don't i don't see friction playing a part on the torque okay good enough answer <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 i understand okay thank you thank you for that. yep yep but but definitely when i when i put these brackets on the wire when jamie sent me the examples i was very happy when i compared them on a on a on a on an arch wire to other brackets, how they moved along the wire with the, what seemed to be less friction, but they didn't tip around the wire with so much. So I could put a 0, 18, 20, uh, 25 slot bracket on the wire, and it would rotate around a sixteen twenty two, for example. It's got a certain ten degrees of play, um, but when I push them along the wire with their modules, or if it was a self-ligating like the Tomy Clippy, it moved with more friction, more difficulty along the wire than my 1725 slot on a 1622 wire. Yeah, so so that's one of the things we're hoping that, you know, looking at the case from Dr. Henrique. Um, as I said, Mark, Dr. Mark did comment and ask me if we would make a canine bracket with a hook on it that he could use. So this is this is all to do with personal preferences of how you work with auxiliaries um, and, and, and how you use them. I mean, some doctors 
want the brackets as comfortable as possible on the lingual. As you know, as, like STB went for the small as possible originally, and then came back to a more functional bracket during the the, the evolution. Um, but comfort is definitely a thing. Patient comfort. I, I get that feedback all the time. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Any more questions? I'm looking at the side and maybe I missed some at the top there. No. No, I can't see any more questions now. I think I've got them all. Thank you, Peter. Thank You're you for welcome. a great pre presentation. Hey, Socrates, is that you? <laughs> Your microphone's off. I just saw you yes. in the top. Yes. I just mentioned yes. you. I just it's saw me. your face. Okay, I didn't see you. <laughs> I didn't thank, see you. Thank you for your mention. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Right. How's things in Greece? Hot. They are hot. We have 35 degrees today. Look, I, I've got a polo neck on. I'm in my room. I have all the curtains shut, so it's cool. <laughs> and we are back to work. We are fine. We, we didn't pay a big price for coronavirus. So we are back so to work. That's good news. Yes. Very good news. I, I think we were back once in Europe. Right. Yeah, no, um, um, I've been confused. I mean, I've been a bit active posting on Facebook about this, but I've been very confused with the statistics from around the world. It's been upsetting f from the view of an English person, as you probably would appreciate looking at the statistics. I don't know, maybe these people are very responsible, but here in Greece, they behave like uh, it never happened. After the lockdown, <laughs> the people <laughs> is out. So I don't know after the summer what will happen. You know? Yeah, yeah. Well, we, we keep our fingers crossed and we, we, we hope that everything's going to work out, you know, for the best. Yes, and and after uh, the lockdown would go off in the uh, UK, you must come in Greece after after the the air companies will start flying again. <laughs> yes, I know. You must visit me. We've got we've got to look forward to the God's Island, you know, coming and maybe do a course <laughs> there. Let's let's arrange a course on God's Island, you know, especially in spring where all the flowers are. <laughs> Mm. Now I look forward. So, to that. We should. Thank you, Peter, for your knowledge. Okay. You're welcome. I mean, as I say, it was just the basics. It was just, uh, you know, cover a few things. I can't give too much away. <laughs> <laughs> you always do. Yeah. No, you're welcome. Now we 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 got to we 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 had to do something, you know, with this lockdown. Otherwise, we all go crazy. So uh, I could see everybody else were doing Zooms and stuff. You know, I've been following the Orthodontic Mastery Group. I don't know how, I'm a, how, how I am a member, but they let me be a member. I think somebody put me in there. Um, so they have some interesting seminars, some big names on there, you know, um, about traditional orthodontics and biomechanics, all sorts of stuff. Very interesting. But I don't have time to... Mm -hmm. It is a good way to to share knowledge. Yes, 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 definitely. With a lot of people. Yeah, yeah, you can reach a lot of people, exactly. Yep. I think we had about 90, Jamie said at one point today. So I'm in the lab, as you see. Yeah? Sorry? I can <laughs> see the lab behind you. <laughs> okay. 
So thank you. I have to read the meeting. Okay. Your microphone is going bing, bing, bing. You sound like a Dalek. Exterminate, exterminate. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. We'll talk soon, face to face. Hi, Sano. Microphone's off. <laughs> You're not putting it on. <laughs> Hello, Peter. How are Hi, you? Sano. I'm good. Lovely lecture. Thank you very much. I thought it was a bit too long, but never mind. No, it was fine. It was fine. I mean, obviously, um, you know, there's a lot you could talk about there, but, uh, you know, really good um, background information. Um, what I didn't get a chance to ask you, and it looks like everybody's gone now, or well, most people have gone, is when you've modified and developed your systems and protocols, yeah. uh, you've got no way of evaluating how that, um, what happens clinically unless you get the feedback from clinicians. Is that correct? Well, yeah, yeah. It's been, it's been um, based on a lot of feedback over the years. Um, um, well, fortunately or unfortunately, as I made some modifications, a lot of my clients in the past never really gave any feedback. They just sent more cases. <laughs> and they never really said anything. They just kept sending cases. And I'd make modifications to the system, you know, without publicizing them or anything. Uh, and um, and 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 things would just went from there really just you know as I yeah. said in the in the in the early days when we when we 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 came away from the best prescription one prescription if you like with maybe super talk for anteriors um, um, that was working with ASIF and we we just started to survey models we weren't doing setups we were surveying a model and then looking at a model and then using maths to compensate, if you like, the talk and, and come out with some logical, and it, it, at the time he said that it was working quicker and better. Yeah, I mean, I think it, it, it would have been great if a university could have evaluated it, but the trouble is, is it's virtually impossible to do because the university, A, generally in, in, in the UK don't do lingual, and B, you would need a large sample size, you would need so many clinicians involved in treating patients where mm -hmm. you know most people will not have you know hundreds of lingual patients in their clinic within within a uk setting only i think only a few so that's the difficulty 2008 i got darwood university in, in 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 india to be the first one to establish a, a lingual lingual in, within their course the students had to finish two cases i think so. Yeah, I mean, it's a shame. It's not. It's 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 becoming um, a bit of a forgotten technique. I mean, I'm f I'm finding that aligners seem to have aggressively pushed their way. But interestingly, I was talking to Giuseppe because you know he came down to the UK for a meeting a couple of months ago. Yes. Um, and I think we're of the opinion that lingual is a very much needed um, and valid technique, particularly for complex malocclusions where the appliance does the heavy lifting, um, correction of deep bites, correction of overjets, you know, using with extraction cases. And then the fashion that seems to be occurring now is that you ditch the lingual appliance towards the end and you simply move into aligners for finishing. Um, yeah. So the patient's out of appliances quickly yeah. or quicker. And also, also, I think some doctors have told me patients want to, you know, they're sort of pushing them to debond. So yeah. the sooner you can debond, the better, you know. I mean, that's why I'm, I'm sort of living in hope with the brackets and stuff when I see something like Henrique's results in such a short time that 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 that, that, that this might be one way forwards. It's it's a it's a faster and more economical. Um, um, option and, and get the case going as your said. Model, yeah I mean I think your model of um, a lab set up you know with a reasonably priced bracket is, is is a strong model because otherwise if it's not that approach you're going you know for a customized system um, you know German or non-German 
um, and it's at the same fees, if not slightly more than a, um, an aligner. You know, for example, mm. one of the large aligner companies. Mm. And I think the trick is, as you said before, keep it under that bracket. So for those that insist on aligners, that's fine, but they'll have their own biomechanical limitations. I have never, ever sex uh, successfully treated a deep bite case well with aligners. Mm. But, when I, but when I've done it with lingual, as you know, the biomechanics, the, it's almost a pure intrusion force going through the center of resistance on the yeah. lingual bracket. So the deep bite correction is quite quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I didn't get into that today about positions. I actually had to look how many slides I had, you know, for general information for most people. But yes, and when you get into the biomechanics and the positioning of the lingual bracket, that's, I, I sort of touched on it when I mentioned the biomechanics. It's a compromise. Always when we're positioning brackets in the lab, we have to think about where we put in the bracket in relation to what the treatment plan is as well. But there's only a certain number of positions you can put the brackets on the teeth anyway yeah you're of course. very limited you have you know you've got all these limiting effects in lingual with the height especially with the height it's quite a lot of people find that the most difficult in the beginning is finding a plane where is that plane going to be and it's much easier to see on a setup model but as i said on the setup model you don't have the gingiva <laughs> you don't have the relationship into other to, to the other teeth you know, whether it's the first phase, second phase, or whatever. Whereas when we bond on a master model, um, even on crowded cases, we normally get 89% of the brackets on the, on, the, on the model. You know, there might be one or two teeth that you can't bond, and you'll bond them separately and make an individual jig. And the doctor knows that they're the, they're the second phase, you know. It's instinctive. Yeah. But when he's got jigs individual jigs to put on not only does it take them two hours clinical time for the first appointment to bond them all whereas when you do it with the memosil trays now enrique you've seen his videos 30 20 20 minutes i think from start to finish when he yeah. bonds his no patient. but if you've, got the, if you've got the individual jigs there's nothing to stop you bonding three or four brackets at the same time as you go along so you you've got the jig you've got because they all allow um the light to pass through so you can do them in quadrants yeah but yeah exactly that's what i did for when ormco wanted me to do the alias i decided that the the the, the bracket positioning for individual jigs actually does pose a problem it poses uh, uh, they, they say increases precision but in my experience when i've tried to reposition from the setup model back onto the master model they seem to move about, you know, it's like, and I'm thinking, well, if this is on a dry model, what's it like in the wet mouth? Yeah. You know, with these little resin jigs. So I modified the jigs to cover more surface area, like on molars, you can get more reference points, so it's better. But in the end, I thought, well, if, what if I'm slightly out with each bracket? That's 14 errors around the arch. That's one big bloody error. Yeah. Whereas, whereas if I say... I transfer to my master model for my setup model and I get the position good on there and then I consolidate them in four, a batch of four which can be transferred into the mouth. It's still individual jigs but with some extra memosil around them but not on the lingual side. Yeah. You know, it's a consolidation. So I consolidated them with... Um, with resin and when i sent them to ormco and sent them pictures and said oh, keep it to yourself i might patent it or something they said oh we've already started doing that for insignia recently <laughs> so it's just it's just a common train of thought you know whether they had or not i don't know but i believe them so it, you know this was calling one of the directors and it's just a common train of thought but if it's logical somebody else will think about it at some point logic will prevail well we hope <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah. so you're right i think consolidating the brackets into groups actually even if though they're individual jigs creates less less error i think um if they're individual i just think there's movement um in in potentially three planes so when they're next to each other 
you know, you're limiting it, it, as you say, it may still not be a hundred percent accurate. Um, you know, so this is why I like the Memosil. I mean, I, I, the people have never had any problems with my Memosil. You know, I get GPs using it, and they 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 understand it. You know, they they find it really easy. Rob Slater told me he said that he's he's he had a new receptionist. And this is one of the few times he sent me a, a you know, like a message. You know, just just out the blue, nothing to do with the work or a case. And he said, I just wanted to let you know I've got a new assistant. And it's the first time she's bonded with your trades. And now she's worked in other lingual clinics. And she, he said she's used every system that's available. And she said it was by far the easiest and, and, and looked, you know, the best. And was just so easy to use and quick. And, yeah. And, and yeah, no, I, 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 sometimes we look and we complicate things because we look for better ways to do things like I did with my instruments. And now I've come back to a protractor, you know, because I realised that 0.1 degree is superfluous in, in, in orthodontics. It means nothing. Whereas I can make them cheaper. And actually, the problem is, if you the more moving parts you've got, the more chance there is of an error. Because can, can you imagine that the, the instrument that's meant to be at 90 degrees, the column and the base, and then you've got this mechanism, it all relies on the fact that it's all working from a base at 90 degrees. And the more moving parts you've got, the more error you can have. And then plus the new engineers are just superb as far as precision goes. So I'm very, very, very happy with them. And people can get them now for like half the price of the old instruments. Yeah. Or just, just Dover, you know, which pays for their training. Before they had to pay for the instruments and the training. Now they can have the training and the instruments for the same price as the old instruments. I think it's a shame we didn't have you here in Europe, you know, all those years ago when uh, some of these other commercial companies were, um, you know, sort of selling their courses um, because it, it, it's left a bitter taste where, you know, they've got their fingers burned because, you know, the motto given was, well, just, you know, fill in the lab form and we'll take care of everything and it's a plug and play nah. USB. And they just, you know... 90% of the orthodontists just dropped off the radar after the first or second case. Yeah, well, this, this was it. I mean, I, 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 I just don't understand how people, and this is why I always stress at the beginning of my courses, no, it's not about the lab system. There's no, there's no golden egg, you know. It doesn't matter. I mean, like, like Jonathan Orsock said when he, when he did the uh, Harmony, he spent uh, two years doing Harmony, and then he came back to me and he said, the, the clinical time was exactly the same as when I used your system before. The clinical time was the same. As in, he meant, he didn't mean the bonding, because he told me the bonding took him longer. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, the yeah. clinical time after for each, each appointment was exactly the same. So he gained nothing and he was paying £2,000 a case or something, you know. He was paying yeah. at that time nearly five times more for no no advantage yeah i mean i think it's just really put a lot of people off in the uk and i think the other problem is is i mean i've used all the systems now um incognito um win um ebrace haven't used harmony and of course harmony is, is no longer with american orthodontics now it's 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 under japanese is it yeah, yeah. I mean, um, so it's it, it basically a Japanese lab have taken Harmony off American orthodontics hands. Oh, wow. And this was at least a year ago, if not longer. Um, so American orthodontics have probably thought, you know, let's get rid of this and uh, mm. have you know, sold it on. But I've, I've used all these systems. And the only problem is, is when there's a problem with a bracket, if a bracket gets swallowed, gets, you know, I mean, you're dealing with endless costs of you know these customized brackets and then a, a three-week wait um and a patient who's got a wire protruding out the back which you've got no choice but to either cut your wire which was actually fine before or to um, bond some composite around it and then remove the composite off the tooth you know it, it it's a complicated system mm. um and of course the other problem was is you know sort of finishing you know a lot of finishing is always required in lingual um, so these systems that kind of, you know, almost misled you and said, look, there's nothing here to do. Yeah. yeah. Nonsense. It's yeah. total 
nonsense. No. I think that's the worst thing that it's that it's that lulling people into that 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 false sense of security that that they think there's nothing to do so then they lose their basics they lose their orthodontic because you would never do that with the labial case you know you've got work to do absolutely you, yeah it's like, why should it be any different for yeah. any other type of appliance so I think everybody got really excited and they probably thought, oh, our dreams have come true here. You know, we can finish cases beautifully with you know, minimal effort because the brackets and everything are perfect. The arch wires are perfect. Um, and therefore the mechanics, you know, by definition should be perfect. And how wrong they were. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then, the, uh, you know, I don't want to, not while we're online with lots of people go into this too much, but then you have to scrutinise who's behind, like we said with Dr. Nicholas, who's behind the screen? Who who did your setup and move your molar six millimetres? Yeah, <laughs> things like that. We, we yeah. that, Who would do that? <laughs> well, I had a, a similar problem with, um, so... You know, without mentioning the name, but you know, you have mentioned the name of that company, which do customise arch wires mm. um, in three dimensions. I I had um, a setup, you know, back from them, not for lingual, for labial, but they had um, expanded the upper sevens by three millimetres bilaterally, and I was very unimpressed. Mm. Because to do that to terminal molars with mm. the end of an arch wire, mm. you know, means you either push the teeth through the bone. Um, absolutely miraculous and I've said who's done this how old was the patient oh the patient was probably about 30 or you know sort of mid 30s that's 25 anyway so yeah. that's so, the point of no return on the arch you know well, you're not going to get you know the sevens moving buckling you know three millimeters per side with a wire that yeah. ends on the sevens that was you know one issue and then I think with the other one with the other German um, customized system that, you know, Dirk previously invented, um, I had um, a problem in, you know, with a case where I've had to accept um, an incomplete result through no fault of my own because I've made it clear on the lab form. Basically, I, I'm doing a unilateral extraction in the upper arch, which means there is a danger the center line can shift. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and in the other quadrant, I want IPR, Mm. So I can maintain things. Mm. Yep. Using elastics and IPR, I can stop that center line from, you know, moving across because there was severe crowding on one side uh, mm. and no crowding on the other. So what did the lab do? Basically, they disregarded my comment about the IPR. The setup I got back, you know, with the teeth uh, in wax looks beautiful. But in reality, you'll never deliver that because there's no anchorage support. Mm. And that's mm. the problem. And I thought, okay, I don't know who these people are, but they definitely haven't got any understanding of, you know, biomechanics. Nor do they communicate and ask you questions. If you ask for IPR, why did they disregard it and just carry on, you know, with what they wanted to do? Yeah, well, my, my response, if I thought you didn't need it, I would have at least written you an email and said, are you sure? You know, I mean, that, as I said... Communication, it's on my LinkedIn slide share. You, you can, anybody can go there and grab the, grab the, well, I'll turn it into a PDF, like a short PowerPoint on lab communications, you know, the important things. And, um, and it is very important, very, very, very important. I think, I, th I think um, those, of, those of us that are going to continue with Lingual in the UK, and I'm definitely one of them because I'm not letting go, I think we're now going full circle. Basically, we've seen this, the systems that were invented in the past by Filion and, and the additions and the modifications you've made. We've seen a customized system that we thought would be the answer to our prayers. Uh, it, it, it wasn't the case. Mm. Uh, we're now going full circle round to the original basics again and saying, right, we've tried everything. You know, let's go back to the basics. There's no point you know, paying these companies thousands of pounds uh, for something that is no better than anything else and you can do it far more economically um, and have you know have more well, I think yeah I think I think you know I mean okay I'm, I'm getting older I'm getting lazier and whatever you're pushing towards that age now you can see the gray beard because I'm not shaving because of COVID I decided to grow my hair and grow a beard and be a hippie 
but um, uh, I don't think COVID's going to go on long enough for me to grow my hair down to my shoulders. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm a pigtail or ponytail or something. But, um, you know, I mean, like Enrique says, you know, I mean, he, he's, he does his, he's been doing his cases 20 years. He said, you know, if your wife's good, you've had your same wife 20 years, why would you want to change her? <laughs> and that's how he feels about his system. You know, he, he, he it's basic. He learned it years ago out of necessity because he couldn't send his work from Brazil because there was too much tax on the work when it came back. So he ends up doing it himself. He couldn't do it with Dr. Filion's because he said, send it to me, I think, or something like that, uh, or buy the targ. And then he, he met Pablo, and, and that's how he got hold of his slot machine. And... Um, and that's it. From there on, he's been doing this basically the same thing. He's modified things over the years slightly, of course. He will have learned, like like Nicholas said, he he, he learned through through trial and error. There'd be things when he started doing his own bonding. He sees the results, and he does all of his own aligners in house, so he sees the results. He knows what to do next time. But I think. I mean, the thing is, you know, um, Enrique is very very unique. You know, I mean, we both know him. He's a very unique. Um, you know, individual is a unique human being. Now, if that were to be translated out, you know, not every orthodontist could do that. Hence, I think it will be lingual for 60 to 70 to 80 percent of the case, do the heavy lifting, move yeah. into aligners. And, and I think it's interesting that the largest aligner company in the world now is um, their patents have now run out, quite a few of them. So mm. everybody's on the bandwagon. And, 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 and really, um, what some of the American colleagues are saying to me is there's nothing unique about their line. Basically, you just need attachments where you feel they're needed, um, mm. and the rest of them are just, you know, suck down aligners, mm. um, and you aim to move a tooth about 0.2 of a millimeter, no more than that, because, it, you know, it may not be achievable, and you can break the movements up into, into small increments. There's, there's more and more software coming out for the orthodontist, and I think... I think lingual will. Be, <coughs> I think lingual will be great, particularly for the cases the orthodontists have to do. You know, real cases where not just minor crowding, because there are more generalists doing that now. But I think the heavy cases, which is what we're really trained to do, difficult work. I think that's where lingual is going to come in. You know, particularly when a patient, when you inform them and say the appliance will be on for eighteen months, twenty-four months, you know, thirty months, it's very difficult. I think lingual is just a no-brainer. It's a no-brainer. Mm. But 30 mm. months or 36 months of aligners, um, it's really testing for their cooperation. Well, there's two things there. One, as you said, the cooperation of the patient, are they going to wear them all the time? Are they going to get lazy? And two, I've talked about this many times, I don't believe that you can design on a computer to go from A to Z make all the aligners and that they're all going to follow a suit. I don't believe that it's it, it's the right way to do it. You should rescan every three months or so, or whatever, you know, maybe four months, but you should rescan after so many stages. Because if you if if something's not worked along the way, how can you get to... If, if it in goes reality, wrong and it's not worked at four, how can you get to seven? Well, in reality, what we found is... What you've said is exactly the case because um, at least 70% of um, aligners' cases um, undergo refinement. So basically what you've said is correct. All these aligners have been made. Mm. You get to the end and you realize much earlier on the teeth weren't tracking, but you just carry on going through aligners. Mm. And so, you know, basically you get this, you know, sort of separation of where the tooth is and where it should have been. And mm. it just gets further and further away which means you should have really stopped um, after a couple of months. You rescanned and ordered more and more. And that's what's been, you know, I think, as you say, you know, that's been going on for 15 years, but nobody's done that. They all get to the end knowing full well it stopped tracking at least six months ago. And then order a new set. <laughs> and then order a new set. So the time just goes on and on and on for treatment. I know, a guy who got through three sets of aligners. And massive sets, we're not talking a short set, we're not talking 10 aligners, we're talking 18 aligners. And he got through three sets because the treatment never finished each time. 
and then he had another 18 aligners and then another one because and then his teeth had seesawed and then the doctor had to tell him he had some root resorption i think it's better to perhaps use a fixed appliance of some sort because i just feel it's far more powerful biomechanically and as i said you know once you've got 80 to 90 percent behind you you can relax you, you know you've got your overjet reduced you've got your buckle segments your canines are in class one and then you can just do minor little tweaks with the aligners and i think that's very low risk well then then you're also you're in con in control you're the orthodontist you're in control and that also reinforces your position as an orthodontist yeah i mean i'm i'm much more comfortable going forwards with that strategy and as you said after with covid i think there's a definite place for a line um for lingual now because you people are going to be looking for something um because everyone's budgets are now being stretched um in practice now we would i've discussed with several colleagues in the uk we're going to have to offer additional charges to the patient there'll be a covid charge in other mm. words with all this personal protective equipment we're going to have to you know wear this for every patient visit well that's on average between 30 to 40 pounds yeah the other problem is you can't see patients as frequently as you did before because the rooms need a lot of cleaning after every yeah. patient. So yeah. you're seeing fewer people per day and you've got the cost of more um, cross-infection equipment, which means that the net result is you have to charge more. Um, and I think, you know, having a system, you know, you know like um, Lingual, particularly with the way you've shown it, it can be done so well with um, a really good lab setup and a, and a, and a very reasonable bracket um it means that suddenly the doors could open up to those that know about it peter and mm. you know i, I emphasize that mm. hope so <laughs> my glasses are twisted how I'm did you get the background uh, of the of the teeth behind you i um i well it's from my photos i installed a few of my photos into the virtual background options of zoom and played with them unfortunately i'm a bit of an hologram because it's very light sensitive yeah. um i found the golden gate bridge was the best one for me but <laughs> i was less of an hologram with the golden gate bridge behind me but uh, as i live in nottingham and not the golden gate <laughs> the view outside here is beautiful if i could get the background of that but unfortunately you should have done the beach with a cocktail, you know, sort of just next to you. Yes, yes, I know. Um, one of the guys in China has the beach behind him. Um, <laughs> that, that scene, that virtual. I don't know where he got it from. And is he's perfect. So whether he has a green background or what. We had a trial run about 10 days ago. And I said, how did you get your virtual background so good? Um, I wanted the moon, you know, like something else. But that was even worse. And then I had another one of my PowerPoint slides, an empty slide with the two logos on it. That was okay, but this one seemed to be the best. Yeah. I think um, the one thing that's come out, because you've had a lot of participants today, is that um, more of these meetings from yourself would be greatly welcome. Yeah, yeah, you know, I mean, I was talking about this, and I, I would, 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 um, would like to to go through maybe a platform where somebody pays a nominal fee, you know, $10 or something. Yeah, for I think that's very reasonable because I think what you've done is you've actually demystified, you know, lingual perhaps, you know, to some of the beginners out there. Mm. Um, and the whole thing is a myth because you can quickly um, have your hand grabbed, you know, by one of these companies and said, yeah, we've cracked everything and then realize you've been taken up the wrong garden path. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I skipped my lunch today, so I'm going to go and eat something there. Right, okay, well, thank you very much, and um, I'll be in touch okay. with you soon. Yeah, Yeah. no, if anybody's got any questions last five minutes before I go, I think Jamie wants to go to sleep. Whoever's controlling the computer in there, I need to switch it off. It's good. What time is it in China now? Thank you very much, Jamie. Thank you for your help. Yeah, it's been great. Great to see everybody. Uh, yeah, it's very uh, we'll, late here in China. <laughs> we'll, we'll do it again with some with some specifics. Maybe I already said to Jamie I will do a free two D PowerPoint, and she's got the video to present it there and already. 
So we've got a video of me doing 2D myself, hands-on, in my old lab. Um, and I've got the 2D PowerPoint I can talk through and then answer any questions. That one I'm going to put out for free. Peter, you're going to can give. I put something through you? Because obviously, you know, you're UK-based now and uh, your lab, um, you know, or, or the lab you're associated with is in Thailand. I'd love to do um, a case through your setup or your contacts in Thailand rather than my customized approach because I just want to see how this um, fares out. Mm. And I think it'd be great to try that with the mm. Nintendo bracket. Um, it's nice to see Jamie, um, you on the computer. Nice we Thank, you, Thank you, Peter. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. You're welcome. Do you like the background, Jamie? Yeah, sorry? Like my new background. Yeah, I, I saw it. It's very good. It's very cool. <laughs> like very a halo, you see. <laughs> and like you are in the mouth. Yeah. <laughs> like a shark. <laughs> Being eaten by I, the I think I think um we will have more webinar in the near future. And I think we will organize it this year, right, Peter? Yeah, yeah. And I think we should also organize a course somewhere on a Greek island as soon as we can all travel. Yes, and um, yeah, and we will invite people some. People just want to go somewhere beautiful to do the course. They keep asking me, will you go to Phuket and do a course in Phuket somewhere? I said, no, I don't want to go back there. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I, I could because, um, as you know, Thailand's. Um, I don't know whether they, they will lift restrictions soon, but all international flights have been banned until the end of June. My wife can't go back. Um, and um, and then when they go back, they're going to have some quarantine things. So you have to stay somewhere for so long. But uh, we'd be glad when we could all get tested. This new test is coming out, I think, soon. And then we can all get tested to see if we've... we've got antibodies or whatever because I I, th I think probably half the population's at it I agree if not more I I felt I, I told you I felt rough when I got back from Thailand uh, I spent um, over two weeks three weeks um, the whole family self I was so self isolating um, but I didn't have the force in but I did have a bit of a cough I had um, fevers at night time in bed um, not in the daytime. Maybe just, you know, like they say, it affects everybody in different ways. I, um, you know, I, I managed to go out running, cycling, so obviously I don't have too much lung damage. But I've had three bad sessions of pneumonia in the past in my life. So one one was quite bad. I was in hospital for eight days, nine days. So um, you expect some scarring. But, yeah. um, I'm Superman. I can go. Do it. No problem. You are indeed. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Great. Okay. Thank you very much. And um, yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. Great you to see you. Yeah. Bye -bye. Yeah, yeah, if you have any you questions, us, I don't think. If somebody have any questions, you can um, contact Peter or me for free um, yeah. from Facebook or by email. Email, and, Facebook. Yeah. Anything. WhatsApp. If people can yeah. find me, I have two WhatsApps, Thailand number, UK number. Mm -hmm. Okay. WeChat. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you, Jamie. Thank you again. Good night. Thank you all. Thank you, Ruben. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye. I'll give Bye. you a call. Bye. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Peter. Bye bye. Welcome. Welcome, everyone. Thanks, Jamie. Bye. Bye. Bye bye. Thank you.